Hello everyone, welcome to Informatica support videos. This is Shruti from Informatica GCS. In this video, we will discuss about Exxon EDP integration. So before proceeding further, let's see the agenda for today's video. So in this video, we will first discuss about why to integrate Exxon with EDC. What is the requirement for this integration? Thereafter, we will see how to integrate both of these products then how to make sure if your Exxon EDC integration is working. So let's start with our first topic that is why to integrate Exxon with EDC. So Informatica Enterprise Data Catalog or EDC is a master catalog of technical assets. It has details regarding the data elements, format of technical assets and all other information that is required for a technical user. It also has data discovery tool that helps in reducing the manual human intervention and increases the user productivity. So now, question arises that what further functionality we can achieve by integrating EDC with Exxon. So, as we know, Exxon is a data governance tool. Thus, apart from technical users, business users might want to document the data elements in Exxon for various reasons such as compliance, standardization, accountability, and monitoring. Thus, Exxon in collaboration with EDC can help both business users as well as technical users. For an organization, for any technical requirements, technical users can use EDC. And if they or business users want to see any data governing details, then they can map data from EDC to data in Exxon and can govern their data through Exxon. So, in this video, which is the first part of Exxon EDC integration, we will see how to configure Exxon EDC integration. Then in the next part of this video, that is the second part of Exxon EDC integration, we will see how to map EDC assets to Exxon for data governance. So let's see how to integrate Exxon with EDC. So first of all, we will see what all changes we have to do from EDC side. So let's go to our LDM admin UI. So this is our LDM admin UI. So here on EDC end, we have to first create a resource of Exxon type. So for creating our new resource, you just have to click here on new then resource. Then from here, you can select the Exxon resource type. So for this video, I have already created Exxon type resource. I'll just go through that. So this is my resource. So here first of all we have to define the name of Exxon resource because later from Exxon side if we will go for Exxon integration then there we have to provide the name of this resource. So just take a note of this resource name that is Exxon test. Thereafter we have to provide here the username and password that is the user credentials of the super admin user of Exxon. So for this video we have used the default user that is admin at the rate informatica.com then the password for this user. Thereafter for this host field you have to provide the host name for your Exxon instance. Then this is the HTTP or HTTPS port of your Exxon instance. And then comes this last option that is enable secure communication. So if your Exxon is SSL enabled, then you have to check this option. And if it is not, then you can just leave it blank. Thereafter, you can just click on test connection to see if it is valid or not. So this is the most commonly observed error. Why this occurs? If you any of the details that whatever you have provided here is incorrect, then you will see such a message. So let's see what in our case is throwing this error. So first of all this resource name or the resource type will not throw any error. So we just have to make sure whether the super admin credential, super admin user's credential whatever we have provided here that user should be in active state in Exxon and he or she should not be in the deleted state. So in our case this admin at the rate informatica.com this particular user is in active state. So thereafter the second thing is we have to make sure whatever email address and whatever password we have provided here is correct. So here 
for the demo purpose, I have purposely put the incorrect password here. So let's try to provide the correct password here, and then we will see if the test connection is valid or not. And if that is also not causing the issue, then we have to check if whether we have provided the correct host name and correct port here. Also, if your instance is SSL enabled and you, if you haven't checked it, then also you will see that particular error. So now I just I have changed the password to see if our test connection is valid and now it is valid. Thereafter, if you will create a new object, it will just show you option to go to the next step. So go to the next step till you see this option of save and run. So thereafter, you just have to click on save and run. So it will create that resource and as well as it will create run the scanner for that particular resource so once that is done then if you will go to the ldm catalog and will see for the content under this particular resource then you can see whatever glossary are present in exxon that all has been fetched under this particular exxon test one so this is all that we have that you have to do for Exxon EDC integration from EDC side. Now let's go to the Exxon UI. So this is our Exxon UI. For Exxon EDC integration, we have to go to Admin Panel, then Customize and Configure, and then Configure Exxon. From this drop down list, we have to select enterprise data catalog and then switch to edit mode. Now, here we have to define all the information, whatever is required here. So, first it is asking for the enterprise data catalog server host. So, we'll provide the server host here. So, this is our host name. Now, we have to provide the port number for this and then here we have to provide the EDC login username and password and here we have to provide whether your login name space is native or something like this so ours is native and now here you have to provide the resource whatever exxon type resource you have created in your edc side that name you have to provide here so in our case exxon s1 so we have provided this name here now we will just save our changes thereafter we have to clear the cache from the exxon server and restart map cache as well as httpd service so this is our, so this is our Exxon server and currently I'm in the location of Exxon home Exxon app cache so here we just have to delete our cache now we have to restart Mancast as well as SCPA service So that's it and now we have integrated our Exxon instances. Now how to check if your Exxon integration is working fine. So to check it from Exxon side you need to go to enterprise data enterprise catalog tab. So let's go to our Exxon UI. We have to refresh it. Then we have to log in here again. Now we can just navigate to Enterprise Catalog tab.
So as we can see, it is showing us the resources which it has been which it has fetched from EDC. So in Exxon, you will see some uh, limited type of resource that has been fetched from EDC. Whatever is supported here in Exxon, you can see those type of resources here under this field resources. And thereafter, the second tab is fields. So about this linking and how to map it, that we will see in the second part of this video. So this is how we integrate Exxon with EDC and how we make sure that it is working fine. So if you have any other queries or any further suggestions or feedback regarding this video, you can contact us using these links. Thank you for watching the video.